the sun in the sky We feel it all unfolding Into the morning we'll take flight It doesn't matter where we're going This time is ours And this is where we start Right now we know The ground we're standing on I was trying to go for the bridge, kind of like. <laughs> I guess I dig her. Don't fall, don't fall on people. Save yourself, people. Really? It's, it needs like, to make him go every time. Queen. Oh, I'm really be like to have me see myself in the mirror. Like, I'm like completely. <laughs> well, the makeup. I know. Oh. You can readjust. You can readjust. Yeah. I was thinking about it, I was like, they can be like...
Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> uh, welcome to sunny Southern California. It never rains here, as you know. Uh, this is just an illusion. Uh, they're shooting a movie next door, and, and they'll be done shortly. Uh, after all, this is Hollywood. If it starts to rain, uh, I'm going to pronounce you a man and wife. will just make a run for it right through. The, um, well, again, okay. okay. Um, I can't tell you what a joy it is and a privilege uh, it is for me to be able to perform this uh, ceremony. Um, when Christopher and Daphne first told me they wanted to get married, I thought, how can a 19-year-old and a 15-year-old get married? It just looks so young, right? This is the very first time where both the bride and the groom are from very exotic places, Lima, Peru, and Maguanago, Wisconsin. No offense to Christopher, uh, he knows that I too am from uh, Wisconsin, a native. Um, up until meeting uh, Christopher, by the way, I thought that my wife Donna and I were the only Michael and Donna in existence. And then yesterday I met his parents, Michael and Donna, so, you know, um, unusual. Um, we attend the same church, uh, Daphne and, and Christopher and Donna and I, and uh, we've enjoyed hanging out together and talking about life and the Lord, and uh, it's just uh, been a delight. Um, we are thrilled to see that their view and their approach to marriage is within God's beautiful design. And in honor of the Lord, um, Christopher and Daphne and I uh, would like to acknowledge the Lord. And uh, if you would bow your heads in prayer. Father, you're the God of all grace who has called us unto your eternal glory through Christ Jesus. Fill us with joy and peace and believing that we may abound in hope empowered through the Holy Spirit. Your name alone is excellent. There is none like you. Your merciful kindness is great towards us. You are full of compassion and slow to anger. And your glory is above both the earth and the heavens. Blessed be thy name, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, before addressing uh, Christopher and, and Daphne directly, I'm going to share with you just a few things about marriage uh, without getting into a lengthy biblical history of it. I think we all know a little bit about marriage. Uh, most people get married because it's uh, still the thing to do. Um, it's a good time for friends uh, to celebrate. It's fun. It's a party, uh, if we're honest. Others get married because it's something their parents did out of pure tradition. And still others marry out of pressure from a person or a group of people or something that they read. And then there are those who approach marriage as consumers. They like the idea of being married, so they'll try that. But marriage is not the invention of man. It is the design of God. Marriage is to honor God because it was created by God and for the glory of God. As in all of life, what matters most in marriage is God. The central theme throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation is the glory of God. So what does the glory of God have to do with this ceremony today? Well, first, Christopher and Daphne will tell you that they're perfect for each other. They are intensely attracted to each other, both emotionally and physically. They share the same faith, envision the same life together, believe their calling is to serve God as one heart and one mind, and they will tell you that they are each other's best friends. And that's a good thing. But Christopher and Daphne, though madly in love, must seek the Lord to enable them to love one another throughout their marriage. The Bible says that they are sinners, imperfect people, inherently selfish by nature, and both of whom have the potential to hurt each other. God, on the other hand, in Christ Jesus, has taken our sins upon himself, and through love has granted us forgiveness, redemption, and acceptance. So in turn, Christopher and Daphne, are to show each other the same radical love, forgiveness, and acceptance. And that is what brings glory to God. And that is what the glory of God has to do with this union. Christopher, Daphne, each of you are a gift from God to the other. God desires that you passionately delight in one another and enjoy life together. You are also a gift to each other in how God has designed each of you with particular strengths that the other needs. Christopher, God has designed you to be the spiritual leader, provider, protector, and the initiator of love in this relationship. By God's enablement, your strength must be Daphne's protection, your character, her boast and pride. Your life so lived that she will find in you the haven for which the heart of a woman truly longs. Love and cherish Daphne as Jesus has loved his church. Daphne needs the strength and leadership that God has designed you with so as to most effectively run the great race that God has set before her. 
Daphne, God has designed you with an innate capacity to nurture and comfort and empower. And in the Bible, you are also likened to the Lord in these regards as he cares for the church. You are to continue to foster this inner beauty and strength as Christopher needs the comfort, encouragement, and companionship that God has so uniquely designed you with in order for Christopher to most effectively run the race that God has set before him. To both of you, I would say this, authentic love is fundamentally an action before it's a feeling. Jesus demonstrated love by subjecting himself to the sufferings of this world, rejection by his people, and death on a cross, so that we could find acceptance and wholeness through a personal relationship with God our Father. It is with this love that God has called you to love one another, to be patient and gracious with one another, putting the well-being of the other before your own, always being open to the ways in which God wants to heal, free and transform you through your relationship. Fight for God's best in each other. Now, the vows that you're about to make uh, and the rings that you're about to exchange are not merely a, a declaration of present love, but a mutually binding promise of future love. Christopher and Daphne are now going to share with each other the personal vows that they have written. And first, Christopher is going to share with us his vow to Daphne. Let me grab this for you. Every time I would see movies of the perfect dream ideal woman, I would think, there's no way someone like this exists. But here you are, standing right in front of me. The moment I first met you, after our first date, I already had hearts in my eyes and could picture our future life together. As time went on, my love grew deeper, and I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. I want nothing more than to continue this life with my best friend, my partner, my inspiration, and my one true love. I'm going to do everything I can to ensure you have the perfect life. I'll be there, I'll be there when you need someone to talk to. I'll be there when you want to be held. I'll be there when you can't reach something placed high in the cupboard. <laughs> I'll be there when you are sick. I'll be there with you through all the ups and downs and support all your hopes and dreams. I love you with all my heart today and forever. Now Daphne is going to share with us her vow to Chris. You want me to go? My dear Chris, meeting you was the clearest answer to my prayers that the Lord has ever given to me. I always dream of marrying someone who I admire, who is as excited, excited as I am to have a family, and who shares the love and respect for the Lord. I prayed for that person before I met you. Many of our friends here in this wedding can vouch for that. Therefore, I am at peace because I know the Lord is the one who chose you to be my husband. My dear Chris, I vow to you to be by your side, to look out for you, your happiness, to make our home a place where you feel at peace and where you always feel my love and especially the love of our Lord. I love you and I'm ready to be your wife. <laughs> now for the, uh, the rings. Christopher, do you take Daphne to be your wedded wife and to live with her according to God's word? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and health, forsaking all others so long as you live? I do. Right. Place the ring on Daphne's hand, please. Repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, before God and these witnesses, before God and these witnesses, I vow to you, I vow to you, with honor and pledge, with honor and pledge, my faithfulness and abiding love, my faithfulness and abiding love. Daphne, do you take Christopher to be your wedded husband and to live with him according to God's word? Do you promise to love him, submit to him, comfort him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health? forsaking all others so long as you live? I do. Please place the ring on Christopher's hand. And repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. Before God and these witnesses. 
before God and these witnesses, I vow to you, I vow to you, with honor and pledge, with honor and pledge, my faithfulness and abiding love, my faithfulness and abiding love. With this exchange of vows, may these rings be the outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual bond which unites your hearts in love and in Christ Jesus. Would you all please stand with me? And if you would, Christopher and Daphne have asked if you would just lift your hands towards us to join in blessing them. And if you would, bow your heads and make this your prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day that marks a new era in Christopher and Daphne's lives as they now travel life's pathway together. We commend them to you. We ask for your abundant grace upon them that they would continually be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling them to establish a home that is full of prayer, thanksgiving, your truth, and your manifest presence. We trust in your wisdom and grace and that you who have begun a good work in them will bring them to completion through both the difficulties and victories in life. Empower them to flourish in their delight in you and in one another, as this is how you have so passionately designed them to live. We ask all of this in Christ's precious name. Amen. On the authority of the word of God, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I now declare you, Christopher and Daphne, to be husband and wife. Christopher, you may kiss your bride. gentlemen, it is my privilege to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Christopher and Daphne Karstensen. It's a beautiful day, looking for something dumb to do. Hey baby, I think I want to marry you. It all started with a wink, an unassuming little thing that has led us here today. She was not one for the bar, we only lived mere miles apart, more like a second chance away. Yet both loved and lost And we'd both been on first dates But this one was different And now I say I saw fireworks That day I saw fireworks for the second time in two days. We battled distance through the years, weekend flights and talk all nights, growing closer, sharing fears. To the mountain top and bent the knee when we got off. You were smiling near to ear. We had both loved and lost, but we can start again. This time we're different. So now we say, I saw fireworks that day in every way. I saw fireworks for the second time. Let's 
Just never change anything. Good evening, everyone. Welcome out on a what is still a lovely Saturday night right here at Westlake Village Inn. Along with Colin, my name is Jason. We are with Oh What a Night Entertainment. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Before we get going, I need to know by the sounds of your cheers, how beautiful was our ceremony? I'm gonna ask these two specifically because these two are chatters. So ladies, by the sounds of your cheers, how beautiful was that ceremony? All right. Now, all together, because Daphne and Christopher are listening, so one more time, everybody, even these two, by the sounds of your cheers, how beautiful is our ceremony? Well, with that, I'm going to everyone just rise on up out of your seat. Nice and easy, just rise on up out of your seat. That's right. All together, and direct your attention to the rear of the room. Because we got some very, very important people introduced to you. First up, your groomsmen. So put your hands together, make some noise, because here they are. Kent, Chase, Philip, and your best man, Robert and Kevin. Oh yeah, looking like your groomsmen just stepped right out of GQ. Nice work, fellas. One more time, make some noise for your groomsmen. Now, once again, direct your attention to the rear of the room because not to be outdone this evening, make some noise for your bridesmaids. First up, make some noise for Karen, Teresa, Vanessa, and your maid of honor, Deborah. Oh yeah, they practiced that all week long. One more time, put your hands together for our amazing bridesmaids this evening. Now, in front of each and every one of you, you all have napkins. We're gonna ask that you unfold your napkins. Get them up high in the sky. Oh yeah, you guys have done this before, I like it. You woke up like, God, I hope we get to wave napkins tonight. Well, guess what? Here we are. Oh, cause they're ready. And if you're ready, say yeah. yeah. Say oh yeah. oh yeah. Well, here they are. Make some noise for Mr. and Mrs. Christopher and Daphne Carstensen. Those hands up high. Make some noise for Chris. Make some noise for Daffy. Make some noise for the Carsons. All right, your first duty is husband duties, my friend. Here we go. If you guys are ready for our first dance this evening, somebody say, "Aww." aww. Looking so far, ladies and gentlemen, let him hear it. Swim every ocean just to be with you and fix what I've broken. Oh, cause I need you to see that you are the reason. There 
Time. How about a huge, huge, I think, standing ovation absolutely amazing. But a nice warm round of applause for Donna and Chris. Hopefully you guys are having a good time. So um, I don't I think I speak for Daphne as well. It's hard to put into words how special this day is and we're really happy all of our friends and family were able to be a part of this and I know we had people travel from far away, people local, but everyone came together and me and Daphne feel so blessed and honored that you're all here to share it with us. And I just thank you all for coming and hope you have a great time. Yeah. We're married. Uh, 
again, I just want to thank you to each of you for coming here. Quiero agradecer a cada uno de ustedes que ha venido el día de hoy, uh, especially to my family, en especial a mi familia, to my family. <laughs> To my uncle, my cousins, they came all the way from Peru for today. And especially, especially my mother and my brother. Thank you so much. A mi mamá y a mi hermano. You guys helped so much for today. Me han ayudado tantísimo por esta noche. And I will love you forever. Los voy a amar para siempre, por siempre. And I just want everybody to have fun tonight. Good evening, everyone. Allow me to say a few words. Even sounds I am not fluent in English. I am Luis Delgado. Daphne Uncle, or Tio Lucho, as the thing told me. My little miss, we all love and join you. I'm in such important event as it is your marriage. We wish your boss, Christopher and Daphne, lots of happiness and joys, not only from us, the Friday family, but from all who have met you guys. And some points in our life, I don't have any doubts to tell you that there are two amazing people who comes from two great cultures, the American and the Peruvian. <laughs> Christopher and Daphne, sometimes you will have different ways of thinking or different ways of coming up with a solution as it's natural. But do not forget sometimes even more important than your point of view, your law. The laws behave each other is the key to successful always. Thank you very much. Let's get a photo of the three of you. My name is Robert. I am one of the best men. I've actually uh, known Chris for about 16 years, since 2007. And uh, man, has it been quite a journey. Ever since that time over in, uh, at Nick's house, Kevin actually invited me to. Um, I never thought our friendship would last this long, but it has. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. We've. Uh, Experienced a lot, of, a lot of things throughout the years, and I just thought I'd never actually be up here talking about the experiences. So, um, but Chris speak. actually Directly speak directly into the microphone. <laughs> okay, you guys hear me now? Oh, oh yeah. So, <laughs> so um, when Chris first <laughs> moved out to California. Um, I remember he was telling me that he was thinking about moving out here and it was a pretty big move for him. He's always been in the Midwest and he asked for my opinion and I told him the Midwest is a lot different. I have family out here, been coming out here for many years 
and um, he went to, he got a job out here and he decided to move. And I'm like, it's a lot different. You might as well do it now while you can. So he made the leap and I decided to help him drive out here. And it's ever since then, he's been actually flourishing really well. And uh, fast forward to a few years after he settled in here, he's, uh, you know, obviously he was dating for a bit. And then I remember one time he messaged me and he's like, hey, I'm going out with this Peruvian girl. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> he's like, where should I take her? I don't know, how do, like, how are the mannerisms? So I'm half Chilean and um, my family's from South America. So mannerisms are pretty, pretty similar, uh, a little different, but pretty similar. So he really was asking for my opinion. And I was like, well, you know, just be yourself and, you know, enjoy yourselves together. So fast forward, they were together for a while and he's like, she's the one, man. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, she's really the one. And I'm like, you know, I didn't really know. You know, Chris, I just had to see it once I met Daphne and then just their interactions together and the way they look at each other. You could just tell that they're they're set with each other really well. They complement each other so much. And you could just see the love between both of them. It just radiates. So. Thank you for having me the speech and I love you too. And honestly, we're still gonna keep going. I love both of you. Yep. So cheers. All right, good evening. Hello everyone. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, for those who don't know me, I'm Deborah, and I'm one of Daphne's best friends. Um, I'm so glad that we're able to celebrate Chris and Daphne tonight. I met Daphne a few years ago at church. I think us Latinas just gravitate towards each other. <laughs> but um, we then started going to Bible studies together, and that's when I really got to know her. I saw what a beautiful heart she has. I saw, she'll, she'll give you the shirt off her back. <clears throat> She would always give me amazing advice. I could call her for anything and she would be right there. She's such a huge blessing to my life. I remember the day she told me about meeting up with Chris for the first time. As soon as it was over, she, she said, he's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and ever since then, I haven't seen her smile leave her face. So, he brings out such a beautiful and happy side to her that's just contagious. I'm incredibly happy for the both of you and this new chapter for you guys. So let's raise our glasses. <laughs> a toast for love, laughter, and happily ever after. Salud. This girl is on fire. Chris, I'm warning you. Yeah. The wiffle ball bad story's coming. Are you guys excited, happy? All the pageantry's pretty much over? Relaxed? All your friends actually made it from all over the world, right? Night, nothing can go wrong anymore. Smile, be happy, right? My name's Kevin, he said that. I've known Chris since he was this tall, and then we became like super sleepover buddies. Like, his mom is like my second mom. Known her forever. Um, along the way, we've made so many more great friends. I know everyone at this table through Chris, or he knows them through me. Um, I'm sure you've had the same experience with your friends, Daphne. Now let's talk about that whistle bell bat. When we were about this tall, do you remember this? I remember this so vividly. This is my best story about you. We were walking down the street to go play wiffle ball at the park. And one of our friends walked up to us and kind of stopped us in the middle of the road. And Chris got kind of nervous about it. So he hit him in the head with the whistle ball bat. And I looked at him like, dude, 
And we both looked at each other and, what do you do then? Run. Yeah, you run. <laughs> we ran and hid in my bedroom and waited for the phone to ring. And then it rang. And we got called downstairs. Do you remember what you told my mom about why you hit him with a wiffle ball bat? I certainly do. I don't know. I was trying to be helpful. I, I don't know how that was helpful. So, I really don't. You thought that was helpful? So, we're going to move forward a little bit. Um, as Chris, you know, moved away, we still stayed in contact all the time, you know, through the phone. Uh, I would call him if I needed help with um, an electrical question, or if Chris needed help fixing his Acura. <laughs> I own an auto repair shop, so that was me. He'd call me. I was there to help. So one day, Chris called me, and um, he needed some help with a car. But it wasn't an Acura. It was a Volkswagen. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I don't remember what was wrong with it, but uh, the, the conversation moved into the direction of whose car is this? He's never called me about someone else's car before. And it became clear to me that he just wanted to help Daphne, it turns out, get her car fixed right. Um, we're going to move forward you know, one more time to a lot more recent. Uh, the first time you guys, or you came out to Milwaukee and Wisconsin, uh, when Chris and I talked on the phone, he's like, dude, I'm coming out. I'm like, all right, let's get these sporting events lined up. We're going to have a lot to do. He's like, no, no, it's different this time. I'm bringing Daphne along. I'm like, all right, that's fine. We'll see what, how this goes. <laughs> and I showed up with her at my house, and she got out of the car. And um, after talking with her for an hour, I immediately understood, you know, what he saw in her. Uh, she's a great person. She was fun to talk to. The whole night we had so much fun, even though my neighbor's came over unexpectedly, like all of them. <laughs> it might have been a little overwhelming. I'm sorry. They do that. Um, but that whole trip, Chris just wanted to help Daphne have a good time. Uh, I remember at the Brewers game, he missed like three quarters of it so he could get Daphne her certificate for the first Brewers game, which I am sure is going to be in your living room. <laughs> right? Good. It's on the nightstand? Perfect. That's where it should be. You keep that there. So, I mean, I guess I've, I've said the word help a lot of times today. Uh, you even said the word help in your, in your vows, right? Um, being helpful in a relationship is so important, even if it's not a personal, close, we're getting married relationship, just as friends, right? It shows people you care. Sometimes that help you think isn't necessary. I felt that with my wife this week in Disney World. <laughs> but it is always showing that you care, right? So, Chris, congratulations on getting a new sleepover, buddy. And Daphne, 